Hey guys, Nick here with Fringeneering Labs, and it's been a while since I've made a video, so I thought I'd give you guys a look at what I've been working on lately. You'll notice that I've made some changes to the video format. I've dialed back the resolution a little bit, so I apologize for that, but I'm working on getting some of these audio bugs out. I've also done a picture-in-picture. -picture. You'll notice that the close-up cam, aka my laptop webcam, is uh, better integrated, so now if I want to give you a close look at something, hold it up to this camera and I don't have to do a bunch of editing afterwards to show you what I'm talking about. So that's why that's there. I've got my headphones on because I have the USB mixer hooked up with my good uh, MXL V63M microphone. It's a little bit tin can right now. I have to dial that in, do a little post-processing probably. Um, but other than that, same show as always. And uh, let's jump into what I'm working on right now. So every now and then it's cool to just build a toy um, because toys are like the ultimate project for blinking and making noise because that's all they have to do. They just have to look and sound awesome um, and they don't have to actually serve any function other than that. Um, it's a lot like prop making except that they have to be... Um, sometimes a little more robust because uh, in the hands of little kids things get destroyed very quickly and also uh, they have to do a little bit more than uh, a lot of screen props have to because screen props are usually given life in post-production um, with lighting and with um, CGI to make things shoot or to make sounds and a uh, toy actually has to do all that in your hands. So it's kind of a cool project. And um, what I'm doing right now actually is building a toy ray gun for my nephew. I played with a lot of different styles. Like what do I want it to look like? What do I want it to sound like? Is this going to be like a rifle from Halo? Or is this going to be like a, an explosive space modulator? And um, I'm really kind of leaning more towards like a space pulp like really like Martian invader sort of uh, ray gun. I want to give it sort of that um, old sci-fi charm sort of the gold uh, you know lots of fins and lots of like sort of glass tubey stuff going on and so the centerpiece for this ray gun is going to be made from a light bulb and you may think, well, a light bulb doesn't sound like the kind of thing that you could put in a kid's toy, um, both because it's, it's somewhat fragile and also because um, it's a high voltage device, right? It's 120 volts. How are you going to make that work? So uh, first of all, about the fragility, it's actually kind of surprising how robust light bulbs are. Um, they'll take a pretty good knock. Um, and second of all, it'll be embedded in the ray gun in such a way so that it'll be a display piece, um, but he won't be able to actually get to it and break it. And uh, if he smacks the ray gun on the ground or throws it across the room, um, the light bulb will be sort of cushioned inside of the gun in such a way that uh, it won't it won't break. So um, that's one challenge. The other challenge is uh, how do you? I mean just having a light bulb in there is sort of the cheat, right? Like you want it to light up and like look like a laser blaster or like a like an awesome ray gun tube, right? So um, the way that I'm going to do that is actually embed some LEDs in the light bulb. And to do that, you have to get inside the light bulb. Um, and I'll just go ahead and show you right now and then I'll, I'll show you um, what my end result looked like. So uh, here's the style of light bulb I used. It's an antique style, sort of like radio bulb, light bulb, um, that I, I have a bunch of these burnout bulbs because I use them in my living room in all my light fixtures because I like these style of bulbs better than like putting a, um, like a vanity bulb behind an ugly thing. So um, I use these and I leave them all exposed. And of course, um, I go through a lot of them because they're not the most... Um, long-lived bulbs that have ever been made but uh, it does leave me with a bunch of things to play with so um, if you look at the bottom of a light bulb you'll notice it has this brass center conductor and then it's got a little insulator around the edge here and then it's got the screw base and obviously the two conductors for the light bulb are the screw base and then the center conductor right here it turns out the centerpiece is actually just sort of a rivet 
that sits down in here and connects to the filament of the light bulb. So if you get your fingernail, you can get your fingernail down under that rivet, under the edge, and peel it up. You see how I've kind of peeled it up there? Now, after you've got it peeled up, you can grab the edge of it with a pair of pliers and just twist. Um, so as you peel, you should hear like a popping sound. There it was. Um, that is the uh, wire that leads from the filament uh, popping out of this rivet. Put that down and then you're left with this insulator and it looks almost like a plastic, but um, it's actually a ceramic. So um, the only way to get it out of there is to break it. And I found that the best way to do that is actually just to take a small nail like, uh, like that and then put it in a pair of pliers and get something to collect the, uh, the broken ceramic in. Okay. And then take your light bulb and uh, put the nail in the hole that you left when you pulled that rivet out and just pry to the side. There. See a big chunk of it just came off? Now you should be able to just kind of put the nail in there, make a little crack in it, and then sort of beat on it until, uh, until it falls out of there. You want to try to crack it into uh, just a few big pieces, um, and that'll keep you from making a big mess um, of broken ceramic everywhere. And after I do that, I just kind of go around with some pliers and uh, fold up the edge, sort of crimp the edge of the, uh, the inside of that screw base. So now you can see we've got a cavity in there with a bunch of glue around the edge where the screw base actually connects to the light bulb. And I haven't actually ruptured the bulb itself. You can do that if you want to. Um, if you wanted to build a ship in a bottle or make like a little terrarium, um, then you could take a screwdriver and put it into the stem and then sort of wrench it to the side and it'll crack the stem out of the bulb. And, um, and then you can get to the inside of it, but then you have to get a file and sort of file down the glass around the outside. Um, and I just want to fill this thing with light, so um, I'm just going to hot glue LEDs into the base of the light bulb and let them shine into the bulb. Um, so I don't actually need to um, break in to the bulb. So, um, I did that already with one, and I embedded in the base of that light bulb, uh, let's see if I can get this up to the, to the camera, uh, a bunch of LEDs. So I've got three white LEDs and one red LED in the middle there. And uh, I've got them all wired up with um, IC clips right now. So it's kind of a mess because I'm just prototyping. But you can see it looks like a standard light bulb. It's got sort of a sci-fi look to it. And then I've got some LEDs in the back. And what I've done is I've wired those LEDs up to my Arduino Pro Mini. And I've written some code on there that basically looks for a pin to go low. And when that pin is low, it starts a series of lights and sounds. And the sounds are played over just a little tiny um, piezo buzzer. So um, that's what goes into this thing. Uh, let me show you what comes out of this thing. So um, the switch that I'm using is actually a trigger assembly that you would find in uh, like an Xbox controller. It's actually a potentiometer. Um, and I've just got it hooked up so that either side of the potentiometer goes to uh, a five volt ground. 5 volt is the system voltage here. And then I've got the center pin going to um, the digital input pin that's looking basically for a low signal. And it's got a pull-up resistor on it as well. So the only way that you can get a low signal out of this is to pull the trigger all the way down. So um, when you pull the trigger all the way down, you get awesome sci-fi sound effects. So I'm just going to kind of hold the light bulb and hold the... Uh, the trigger here and let you see what that looks like.
So it kind of sounds like uh, your classic dollar store uh, ray gun. And I do have some code to make the other sound effects that you're familiar with, sort of the wee, 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 and the white noise sound effect. So I'm going to add all of those later. But um, as you, you look down the center of this thing, I mean, just look. All this is doing is cycling through all of the LEDs as fast as it can, basically. And you get this nice sort of, uh, you know, ray gun, zappy sort of effect. Um, and I can do other things with this. I can make the three white LEDs sort of make a circle and have the red one pulse in the center. I can do all sorts of things um, to get some really cool visual effects out of this. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to work on a chassis for the ray gun, and I'm going to do that probably out of um, some foam and build up the ray gun around the, the light bulb as sort of the ray tube. And then I'm either going to take that foam and use it as a guide to cut some um, wooden parts and put the wooden parts in and then sort of paint the whole thing with a um, Plasti Dip tool coating to give it some rubbery, um, rubbery texture to make it a little less uh, splinter prone and to give it a little bit of protection and then um, coat the whole thing with a metallicizer and sort of the gold paint. Um, or what I'll do is take the foam pieces and just directly coat those with a resin um, to harden them on the outside and then do a paint and a finish. Um, and the whole thing will be nice and encased so that, uh, you know, little kid hands can't get in and fool with stuff um, that they shouldn't be fooling with. And uh, there'll be a lithium polymer battery embedded in the gun um, to power it and then a USB jack on the back so that it can be recharged. And that way mom and dad aren't going out and buying batteries um, every couple days for this thing. And um, I guess that is... Ultimately, the goal of this project is just to annoy um, the hell out of my brother uh, because I know my nephew will be running around the house just holding the trigger down and this sound is all that he's going to hear for days and days and days and, uh, you know, parenting isn't hard enough as it is. So Uncle Nick's going to help him out. Thanks for watching Fringineering Labs. I know this wasn't the biggest, craziest episode, but hopefully you learned something and hopefully you'll find a way to use the light bulb trick in some projects of your own. Um, I can post the code if you want to uh, see that, but there's not very much going on in there. You can probably figure it out on your own. And until next time, I'm Nick and happy hacking.